Welcome to Beacon Church, a light to our neighborhood, a beacon set on a hill. We aim to be a beacon of God's good news in Hansworth and wherever he places us to live and work. We are here to demonstrate to others the good news of Jesus Christ, to restore life, rebuild community, and build up the body of the church in love so that all are actively involved in the task. Go, be fruitful, and multiply. Good morning to all our Beacon folk and all the visitors who are watching online today. We warmly welcome you to today's service. Um, you know, if you're here today, it's by no accident that you're here. God really wants to speak to us and he really wants to move in power today. So I would urge you to make sure that you listen carefully to all the songs, all the things that are being said. I don't want you to miss what God um, needs to say to you this morning. And so just before we begin today's service, there are a few reminders. You know, we may not be able to meet up physically, um, but we do have the opportunity to, to speak to one another through the live chat. So please greet each other in Jesus' name. And any online visitors, please make yourself known to us. Um, you know, we'd love to speak to you too. Um, so please use that chat function whenever you have the opportunity to do so. Now, you might remember a couple of weeks ago, we had a visit from Helen, um, who works for Safe Families, explaining how we could partner with Safe Families to support families in our Hansworth area. And I'm delighted to say that later on, we will have um, Helen with us online. So if you have any questions about Safe Families, what it does, how to get involved, and anything like that, please type them up into live chat during the service, and we will do our very, very best to answer those with you today. Um, we will be having a testimony and a, a short interview with um, Helen later on. And so before I hand over to the worship team, I just want to share a little reflection with you, just something that has been going through my mind through, throughout this week. Um, I don't know about you, but Monday's announcement by the PM for me led to quite a bit of excitement. Now I know that for some people it led to a lot of worry, um, but for me it was actually quite a bit of excitement because I don't know about you, I've, I've been using the phrase, I can't wait a lot over this lockdown. I can't wait for kids to go back to school. I certainly cannot wait for my children, hallelujah, to go back to school. I can't wait to eat out. I can't wait to have my hair cut. You know, twice this week, people have commented on my horrid hair. Um, one in a Zoom meeting on Tuesday, and I know that person is watching right now, I'm not gonna name them, um, but very confidently they commented on how terrible my hair looked. And a student, during a lesson I was teaching online, said the following, and I quote, um, he typed this up, Sir, barbers being closed has hurt you really bad. <laughs> yeah, true story. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. I can't wait th for things to go back to normal. I can't wait for that routine um, to start again. I can't wait to get rid of all this on top of my head. However, more than all those things, I can, I can honestly say that I can't wait to hear James's message today. I know that he has something really powerful to say, something that is going to come from the throne room of God itself. And so I really cannot wait to hear his message. And I've been, I have to say, excited throughout this week because I know that this is a message that I need to hear. And I know that it's something God has been saying to me. And so before we begin any further, and before I hand over to the worship team, let us just pray together, and I'm just going to invite them to come up um, as I'm praying. Father in heaven, we just want to give you thanks, because this is, as I've said already, the day that you have made. And Father God, we know that you are going to speak to us, Lord God. We know that things are going to change today. And I just pray, Father God, for this service. I just pray, Father, that you would cover each and every one of us, those of us who are leading in worship today, those of us who are playing instruments. Lord God, we pray for Helen as well when she gives her, her message to us, for all of us who are listening, but for James specifically too. 
Lord, we pray against any plan that the enemy might have for this service today, any arrow he wishes to send. Lord, we pray that you will cover us in the blood of the Lamb today so that any arrow he does send would, be, would return back to the kingdom of darkness. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And we just pray, Father God, that you will meet our needs this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, church. We're going to worship and we're going to praise God today. Um, I know this first song that we're going to do, we'd normally uh, be getting up and greeting everyone, giving people hugs. But today, I want to make sure that you're using the chat function. Make sure you greet each other. Make sure you talk, each, talk to each other um, because we're going to be back together very soon. Um, so, yeah, greet somebody. always so much to worship and praise God for um, in the good times and the bad Amen. so we need to recognize that God is still great and is still greatly to be praised Amen. so let's sing
be your name. our foundation of our lives and he is our God and so we're going to declare today that 
We are putting our hope in God. We are putting our hope in Jesus. So let's declare that today.
thank you, Jesus, that through the storm you continue to be, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, just before um, I ask James to make his way, I just want us to think about the words we've just heard. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love. And for me, that line, weak made strong in the Saviour's love, just keeps coming back at me. Because I don't know about you, but there are so many of us who are feeling weak. And I'm not just talking about physically weak. We may well be mentally weak. We may well be going through a period and a storm in our life and we're thinking, how on earth are we going to get out of that? But you know what? It's when we're weak, God in us is strong. Christ in us is strong. It's Christ who will carry us through. And so I just want to give these words as a sense of encouragement because when we look at those words again, the Saviour's love, through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Now we often hear about God's love and, you know, the Saviour's love. You just have to look at some books in the Bible. Um, Songs of Solomon, which is about love. You know, our God's love, Christ's love, is even more passionate and more caring than that particular book. You know, that's the God who we serve. He loves us with such a great passion that even when we're going through the weakest moments in our lives, as well as the happiest moments in our lives, he is there. He is God and he will carry us through. So I just want to Give that as a word of encouragement. And James, I'm going to invite you to come up. Good morning, Beacon. Uh, One thing we did forget to mention was is how nice it is outside. I looked outside and it was bright, the birds were singing, and it was amazing just to have this nice weather. And me too, I'm suffering from no barbers, as well as Karav. I remember in the meeting, um, someone said the comment, I was there, and it made me laugh because we're all suffering. And it's very funny as well. On Friday for school, I do business, and we have to do a presentation of what we're doing. And mine is a barbers, so maybe in the future, Gurav might come to my barber, <laughs> and I'll fix him up. But yeah, for those who do not know, I'm James. Um, I'm just grateful for Tim for giving me this opportunity today to bring my message on waiting on the Lord. Uh, the last time I spoke was probably in December. If, if maybe after this, you may want to watch it, and you might learn something from it as well. And for this one, I hope everyone is touched and can learn from what it's doing. And, and don't forget, please use the live chat as I will be asking questions. I like to keep it interactive and I just hope you're all being attentive. So yeah, waiting on the Lord. When I was thinking, what, what does this go with and how does it make go with me? So about two years ago, it was like starting a gym. I went to gym. So obviously before, I love food. If you know me, I love food. And yeah, the more food you eat, the bigger you get. I was quite a big boy <laughs> back in the day. And so I started gym, and doing gym is, is, is not easy. You've got, you got to wait for the results, first thing. It's that waiting period of over a period of time. You wait. Discipline. Going to the gym, I, was, I go to the gym now like four times a week. Well, I used to go four times a week, but now I don't go any times a week because we're locked down. But it's that discipline and waiting for results. Over that first couple of months, no results. You're there, you just panicking like am I really wasting my money I'm not seeing anything over the first year had gone I see it, slow results I'm coming together and that's the, it's developing um two years come I feel motivated now I'm in the gym most of the time and I feel healthy about myself but sadly it's locked down but in that gym that two years phase you start to develop you've got that pattern of routine and you're waiting you're always waiting and you you start to learn your discipline. And that is kind of like waiting on God. You start, you learn how to discipline yourself and you learn how to wait. And so, yeah, that's the first bit. I just want to ask you a question in the live chat. You are delayed on my end, but I will fill in for them areas. So first question, 
when you like to do your delivery and your shopping online, especially women, uh, sometimes men, um, you like to you like to get that parcel quick. You like that next day delivery. Whereas me, I'm not too keen on next day delivery. I, I'll take that long wait to get my package. For example, Francesca and me. Um, she loves that next day delivery on that pretty little things or that next outfit. She can't wait. She has she hasn't got patience. I tell her, why don't you just wait? No, no, I got the cash. I can do it there and then. Me, I'm broke. I gotta wait. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to see what are you like at home. Do you wait for the parcel to come, or do you want it instantly? And for sometimes that is like us with God. We ask him so many things and we want it instantly. We want him to do it there and then like a click of a finger. But sometimes God doesn't do that. God either wants us not to have it or he delays it. And that is a sign. And one thing I did pick up a couple of weeks ago from Gurav, his message, which was, I loved his message. It was pride. Is it our pride getting in front of us? Is it our pride stopping us from getting what we need to receive? Which is nice. Thank you, Gaurav. And when we wait, we learn how to build spiritually and physically. Sometimes we hear physically too much, but we're not hearing spiritually to what he's saying. And another question. Who in the Bible waited who do you know in the Bible waited and who did not wait on the Lord? Just to fill in that time where you can answer this question. There's a famous saying, patience is a virtue. When we're younger, we, we ain't got patience. We just love it. We just do anything we want. Our mom tells us to do something. We don't do it right there and then. Just, oh, this is a lovely, lovely example. Our mum asks us to pick up the clothes, what she just ironed, to put on, put upstairs. I, I normally do it straight away because I know my mum, she would get on to me. So I pick it up, I pick up my batch and then I put it, I do whatever. Nathan, I think this, the, the clothes are still downstairs. <laughs> We're still waiting to be picked up and I know mum will get on to him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It does make me Google sometimes. <laughs> but in this world, um, there ha it hasn't been such a get it now. During this COVID, we all want answers. We all want something to keep us calm in the storm. People are rushing, making vaccines. Normally it takes about a couple of years to build a good vaccine, but nah, we got it in like eight months. And then people ask them questions. Is it really good for us? Is it really going to take us that far? But we really need to not look for the worldly answers, but listen to God and what he's saying. Wait for him to say, yeah, this is good. We can take this. Are we doing that, are we doing that in today's world? Are we listening first? Or are we just listening physically? And when we barely see any progress, we start panicking. We start stressing. We don't want to stress. We're Christians. We, we trust the Lord and... He will do his um his 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 will sometimes though. But when we trust in God, his foundation is set. When we wait on him, we can stand firm on him. Uh we become dependent on him as well when we wait. We don't we don't just rush around, we ride the wave. We become like surfers. I don't know how to surf. I don't know anyone who knows how to surf, but surfing is hard. But when you watch the film uh, surfs up when Cody's on that last last wave and it's massive we ride it like Cody we're there we're chilling we're relaxed that's what we are and some of us we've lost patience some of us are like servers that rush into the wave and then we fall and then they wonder what, what did I do wrong didn't wait and when we don't wait on God our relationship starts to fall. We don't get what the things that we want. 
and now that you've had some time to share if anyone is is watching i ask for someone to bring up the comments so i can read them out uh Gaurav, if you're ever on the live stream could you please um i ask you in like five minutes if you could share some answers which we have had before yeah, yeah, people waited. So I've got, um, I've got, um, I've got from Francesca, Abraham and Sarah. So Francesca said Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah. Yeah. They, w they, they waited yeah, to have a child. To have a child. Um, Gigi, David waited to be king. David, he waited to become a king. Um, Edwina, Simeon waited for the Messiah. Edwina said... Simi Simeon waited for what? For the Messiah. For the Messiah. Sorry. Um, Lucinda, um, Elizabeth and Hannah waited to have children. Elizabeth and Hannah waited to have children. See all these people in the Bible, they waited. Did they receive what they wanted? Further on the line, they did. Yeah. As we can see, when you put your trust in the Lord or when you wait on the Lord, you will receive the blessing for it is his will that will be done. Firstly, one of my examples was Abraham, one of the earliest characters in uh, the Bible in Genesis. We see throughout Genesis, he wasn't that obedient at the first. He wasn't obedient, but he learned and grew with God. We all know that um, he wanted a child. Him and, him and Sarah, they were old. They were scared that they wouldn't be able to pass on their line. But God said... When you wait, if you wait on me, I will give you a child and he will raise a great nation. It, this will be a great nation and it will expand the stars in the sky. It will be as great as them. And we see Sarah at first didn't, she didn't believe it. She, did, she didn't want to wait. She didn't have that faith that he was going to, that he, God, God was going to uh, do this. But Abraham, I love one thing I love about Abraham. He always had faith, always trusted and waited on him because he knew that he was going to do something amazing. A year had passed. What happened? They had their first son. Hannah, um, Hannah. Abraham and Sarah. Sarah being old, she still gave, he still gave her the ability to have a son. And, but, and when we wait on God, he gives us immense blessings. He can give us as many blessings as he wants. But in order for that to happen, it needs to be in God's eyes. It needs to be in the will of God. We can't ask for stuff that are not in the will of God. For example, I can't ask for God for a PS5 and it will come. If that does come, that is out of love. Because <laughs> he knows that I'm, I'm stressing. <laughs> but when we do things for God it comes at a cost it gives up a cost of sacrifice cost of time and when we inherit those gifts them gifts will give us something to work with God he always gives us things that we can use to, to better him the gift of patience that always betters him the gift of me now preaching it is used to better him, to bring it back to him. I think Brother Philip uh, said this last week, something very important which stuck out and expressed. When we let God uh, do his work and we wait on him, he builds a firm foundation. Uh, I love I love that because when we on that firm foundation, we are like a rock. We cannot be moved. It's like the story of the man who built his house upon the sand and the man who built his house upon the rock. When we don't wait on God, we become the people who built the house on the sand. When the wave comes in, it crumbles. When we become wait patient on God, we become the people of the rock, the, who build the house upon the rock. We don't get moved by anything. The storm, the weather, anything, we become firm. But that only comes with discipline and consistency we don't just wait once and it's all done we do that throughout our whole life on the other hand 
people who didn't wait for God. As we see, as we see, as as I see, I've done this um, talked a couple of times, and I always come back to the people of Israel. Why? Because they had they were so disobedient. They they had many chances to love God, and they loved God one second and they disobeyed Him the other second. They He had just been the, brought them out of Egypt. You just you just been saved. You brought them out of Egypt, and you was nice and free. But who were they free for? They were free from e- from the from the gods, really, from God. They thought God being with God was it was a task. It was hard. You just got them out of slavery. But they were still slaves to themselves. You see, as Moses went up into the mountain, went to get the tablets, the new covenant. What were the people doing on the surface? Building golden calves. They couldn't wait. They saw something else and thought, this is better than what God is going to give me. I feel sorry for Moses. He did, he did a lot. He trusted God. He thought, yeah, I'm going to be easy out the desert. Promised land's there. Next destination, easy. He didn't think 40 years in the desert. He didn't see that coming. And it's mad how God can, the consequences of God is, it can be damaging. You see how the Israelites learned their lesson. 40 years in the desert. They didn't even get to go into the promised land after that. But you know who did? Their next generation, because they'd learned that they, they learned their lesson. But the new people that they raised up in the next generation, they were going to have that patience with God. As we come to realization, realization, we know we're not perfect like the Israelites. We're not perfect all the time. But we know that God is loving and he always wants us to give us another chance. So he gave the next generation a chance. God is a forgiving God. God is a loving God. And God will give us the things that will better him when we trust in him and when we wait on him. As we see, Moses was a, was not that great either. Before before he created that discipline, he apparently he he murdered someone before in his old life. But God gave him a second chance to lead the people, and then he started to wait. From all situations, you can see the patience when having patience. We see the power in God and how po- important it is to do that. When being a follower, patience will come in time. Discipline will come in time. But it will come in God's time. How are we going to develop our relationship with God if we're not putting, putting time with him? If we're not waiting on him to listen to him? Where will we go? Where will we go? We will end up like them. Dead in the desert, dead in the desert, fading away. Why do we worry? I don't know. God asks us to to just wait. It says in reinforced in Hebrews ten, thirty six, you need to preserve so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what is promised. When we wait on Him, we will get what we are promised. And I was thinking, what what does God why does God make us wait? Why does he want us to wait? As we can see, waiting reveals our true motives. Waiting has a way of bringing out the best and worst in us. People who don't have good motives won't last long because of them because they're not interested and they're not committed. They see it as a long thing. But sometimes when you have good intentions and, go- and you can wait, you have good motives. As we can see by Cain, Cain and Abel. Cain had bad motives. Killed his brother out of jealousy just because he was rejected by God and his sacrifices. When we put our pride first, like Guru said, we just see the bad things. We don't see the good things. We all want, it's all about me, 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 and me. Um, And we see that, we let our egos get ahead of us. We deserve more. We need this to do this for God, but it's not really for God. 
for myself. As you can see, Jacob and Rachel. Jacob had good intentions. Waited seven years. And not it was in seven years, there was more years added onto it after. But he waited so that he could get what he wanted, and that was his wife, Rachel. He waited se loads of years. Imagine waiting that many years just, just so you can get with someone. That's, that is crazy. <laughs> My dad waited how long for my mom just to get married. <laughs> you can see him pointing at me like this at the back. <laughs> but he waited because he loved her. And that's like God. God waits for us because he loves us. <laughs> Second point, waiting builds patience in our lives. As I've said already, patience in waiting for small things leads to having patience in the bigger things. If you can't wait for God to do a small thing, we certainly can't wait for God to do a bigger thing. Our problem, problem is that our perceptive, perspective is wrong. We tend to think the bigger things in life are finances and possessions, while God thinks influencing and changing people is more important. And that's like Jesus. Jesus, Jesus waited. But I used to think, yeah, Jesus was born when he was like 18. He, he went out preaching. He was, he was doing God's work rapid. No, he waited 30 years. 30 years, you know. Imagine if he was 18 and then started preaching, you probably would be more followers, but no, no. <laughs> he waited 30 years. <laughs> and why? To develop himself. God said, I don't want you preaching from early. I want you to preach for three years and that will be it. Waiting transforms our character. As I said before, my first, exam, uh, first example, Moses. He was transformed in God. Waiting has a way of rubbing off the rough edges of our lives. Most of us know the story of Moses delivering the Israelites from the Egyptians. A story of God doing great miracles. But most people forget to mention about how Moses having to wait 40 years in the desert. Before God came to him, God used his time to to transform him and build his character. We know this because, because when he was a young man, he killed someone, he, as I said. He was aggressive an uh, aggressive and impatient person before. But in his life, God learned how to change him, mold him to who he wanted him to be. He wanted him to be in God's image. And we too can become like Moses. We can change and become one for him. Be like God's image, love, kindness, peace, everything. But that's when we start to be patient with him. And my last point, waiting builds intimacy and dependency on God. And this kind of links to my old message, trusting on God. When we trust on God, we learn how to be dependent on him. We see many successful people in the Bible because they all knew that the only way that they were going to work, go through him, get through life with him, was being intimate and dependent. Upon him, a relationship with God was formed. It wasn't a get-rich-quick scheme when we trust in him. It was a long journey. Many highs, but many lows. Through time, we learn how to get through the difficulties with him. As we are right now, we learn how to depend on him and take us through this world through this time we always believe that God is just interested we learn that we we take this interest and that we build on this interest with God we want to be curious with God we don't want to just lay back be lukewarm we want to build with him we want to build that structure with him we want to desire him and that will come with being intimate and dependent on him. As you see with Jacob, um, Joshua and Celeb, spies, they scouted out the promised land. They said, they came back and they said, we can go there. It's not that dangerous. We can do it with God. But the other people came back and was like, no, we can't do that. There are giants in there. But Jacob said, said, with God, we can do it. 
And guess what? They reap their rewards, they come from the celebs. They let their future generations pass through. As we can see, when we build intimacy and dependency, we will get through life with God, with the blessings that we receive. And one verse that um, I've picked was Psalms 41 to 2. If you intended, you could just put that on the screen, please. And I think this is important as well because Uncle Philip used this verse last week and it stuck in my head. And when I was looking at this and thinking what verse is good, this verse came into my head as well. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard. When we wait patiently, he will do something about it. But we can only he can only do something about it if we become dependent on him. We can't just cry out, but have no feeling. We can't just cry out and not put any... We don't have no Holy Spirit. We can't feel what we're saying. We can't just be false crying out. But when he does, when we do cry out, he takes us out of that slimy pit. That slimy pit is things in our world like today, our stress, our financial issues, our mental health, childcare when we're struggling, school, jobs, and when we're struggling with faith and other issues. He will take us out that pit, lift us up and put us on that firm foundation of rock. And when we're able to stand on that rock, we can build. When we're on that foundation, we can build like a house. Brick by brick is how our faith works. Each stone is another piece of faith putting into God until we come to a house. When our house is complete, this is when everything, we put everything for God. We sacrifice anything. As I said, a lot of things mentioned may apply to ourselves. And we want God desperately to change things so quickly as we think we can't live our lives properly without them being fixed. This can be seen as us in that pit. We are captive. We are restrictive. We feel like we can't praise God. But we can praise God every day for everything. We wouldn't be here without God. And uh, there's one verse I love. I love in Matthew 6 27 can any any one of you just what Jesus said can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life uh, I've, when, when I'm stressing I, I always go back to this verse because it when you're stressing it doesn't add a single hour to your life it wastes a single hour of your life it takes over stuff it takes over us but we can't add anything we just got to Trust in God and then we will not stress. But that takes time. When we do these things, we allow God to make us make moves in us. We put up a wall and we, we put God outside sometimes. But when when we want God but when God wants to change that, He strips down our weaknesses. He strips down our pride. He strips down everything that the devil does to put what he does. And he puts, he puts himself inside with us. He wants us to develop us so that he, we can take our gifts and use them for him. He wants to break through that barrier that we put up. He wants to put them down and make us look out for other people. He doesn't want us to shell inside. He doesn't want us to turn into a, a turtle and close up. He wants us to be like a bird in the sky, out high, spreading the word for him. Amen. He makes us a solid rock and something that we can stand firm. As I come to a close, I want you to spend time thinking, what can we do to build our patience with God? What can we do to become dependent on him? What can we do to mature and become like the image of God. 
how can we be like Abraham? How can we take our second chance in this life? How can we use that life? When being a Christian, it's like a mustard seed. You start off small. But when you develop with God, you become the final outcome. You become a huge tree full of potential because God wants us to reach our potential. He wants us to grow and manifest what he has for us. So a challenge for this week. Can you, several times this week, ask God to be patient? Spend some longer time Hear what he wants you to, to hear. Ask the Spirit to help you. That's what it's there for, to help us develop and hear what God's saying. So, yeah. Thank you for listening to me. I hope this touched you. I hope you can spread this to someone else. And for young people as well. How can we be patient with him? Because I know I'm a young person myself. I struggle myself sometimes being patient with him. Don't rush God. Just be yourself and trust in him. And then you'll see signs of results. You will see differences. So yeah. Thank you, Beacon. I'll just end in a prayer. Dear Lord, we know that we can be patient on you. Dear Lord, help us build ourselves, help us manifest what you want us to be we know that sometimes we're not perfect sometimes we may fall but with you god we can go the distance we can reach that potential that you're saying for us we can be on that firm foundation he can be our solid rock so that we don't move when the storm comes we know that waiting on you will bring the blessings, good blessings for you. That we will be able to just boast in your name, dear Lord. That we can just sing, shout, praise, everything with you. And that we can just be with you more and learn and just develop to be more like you. Amen. So, yeah, thank you. Hope there's next time. <laughs>
its joy is refreshing. Oh, it stores my soul. Mercy. See his glory face to face. Hallelujah, I am not You know, the words of that song, your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. You know, those words mean so much more than, than just the words that are printed on a PowerPoint or anything like that. You know, when we're going through those difficult moments in our, in our life, you know, James spoke about us being relaxed. It's not necessarily because we're relaxed in our own strength, but it's because the spirit of God, his peace is in us. And we know that whatever happens, our God is still in control.
he's still going to come again and we have that faith we have that hope we have that blessed assurance that this that we don't have to worry about what's going on on this earth because we know we have this everlasting moment in our life that we get to spend with our savior and i just want to thanks james for for his word today i have a minor criticism james the english teacher with him he couldn't let this go it's the gym not gym you know you're not going gym you're going to the gym um but that's my minor criticism determiners you know that they're there for a reason (laughs) um but just if you are looking at um, the live chat james there's been a lot of discussion about the message that you've brought today um lots of words of encouragement but also you can see that you're getting people to think a lot and that's really really important you know because what you need to remember is that God has given you a gift today to speak in front of other people um, and no matter how you feel okay it's really spoken to individuals and it's not because you're great it's not because you're wonderful but it's because the spirit of the Lord because he um, you've allowed him to to do the work it's got other people discussing and talking and I just want to ask you just to think really carefully, especially those of you who are younger. You would have noticed that James asked a lot of questions and he answered those questions in his service. You know, it's natural when we're thinking about some certain things in our lives to ask questions. But James went to the Lord. He went to the word and he found his answers in the Bible. He didn't find his answers from his friends. He didn't find his answers from from um, the media or from culture. He went to God and the Lord answered him. And so I would encourage you that when you've got certain questions in your mind as youngsters and even when you're older, go to God. You know, some of us may be thinking that, you know, James has spoken this message and I've waited and I'm still waiting. And Lord, why is this person gaining when I'm doing all these things right? Why can't I see other people doing better than I am? We've got to remember God sees the bigger picture. He has a much bigger plan. And whatever we might see happening in front of our own eyes, we need to see things in spiritual eyes. And we can't see through, um, in the spiritual unless we wait upon the Lord. So I just want to thank you for that, James, because it really spoke to me today. And I just pray that you will allow yourself to be um, continue, continue to be used by God. And will there be a next time? There better, better be. Better be a next time. Okay, because more people need to hear you speak. More people need to hear the word of God coming from your your mouth. So I'm just going to finish off in prayer and then I'm going to hand over to um, Pastor Tim. Father, we just want to thank you for today. We want to thank you that you are God alone and that you indeed are the one who walks before us, who protects us, who shields us, who, who, who guides us, Lord God, um, in our journey with you. I pray, Father God, for the message, Lord God, that James has brought today. I pray, Father, that those who have listened live and those who will listen after, Lord, will will continue to be blessed by it. And Lord, will continue to be blessed by the message that he has um, brought. And that, Father God, the, the things that he has said, that we would learn from them. But Lord, that we would be able to move forward in you. And that, Lord, whatever things the enemy says to us whatever lies he has told us lord god we pray that they will fall away because of the message that we have been given today i ask this in the name of jesus bless lord god our beacon family bless lord those who are visiting those who have been listening and those who will listen lord and father god help us to reach out help us lord god speak to us speak to our hearts lord challenge us whatever stage of the journey that we are with you lord to to just live for you lord and that we will bring others to you i pray in jesus name amen amen thank you pastor One of the ways that, the, uh, that we reach out to people is simply by forming relationships, isn't it? It's simply by um, getting to know people and loving them, and they see Jesus through us. And a couple of weeks ago, we had Helen from Safe Families um, speaking to us about what they do, because uh, an amazing uh, organization which has a local work here um, in Birmingham and in the black country, and Helen is one of the people who organizes that work. 
And we're going to hear a testimony from somebody, a story from someone who was helped by safe families, by an ordinary person, a volunteer, volunteering for safe families who made a huge difference to her life. And then we're going to hear um, some questions and answers that Helen and I recorded, which help you understand a little bit more about how we might be able to partner with safe families and how you might be able to help somebody in our community um, in their time of need and even help them to find the Lord. Whilst uh, this video is being played, if you have questions for Helen, please type them in the live chat uh, and Helen will do her best to answer uh, during the service or during the, the notices that we will have after this video. And I will try and feed back any questions and answers that are given in live chat a little bit later. So we'll go over to our story about the work of safe families. I think the most important thing for me is my daughter. Her name is Kazaya. She was born in 2016. There was a possibility that they were going to take my baby away because I was not physically in a position to mind a newborn. It was quite unimaginable to think that somebody could take that newfound joy that was within me. I had a call from Safe Families saying that they had a, a mum who was pregnant and on crutches because of her disability, who was absolutely determined she was keeping her baby. And I thought, I want to do everything I can to help that happen. It didn't take us long to, to, <laughs> to develop quite a good and close relationship. We used to go out for coffees, play dates. She would introduce me to different people. Volunteering isn't something you do on your own. I could see straight away that Daphne needed more people in her life and people in Kaziah's life as well. My mum, she died when I was 10. And I feel like, you know, everyone, when they have their first child, they usually have the mum to support them. And I feel like Helen has come to play a role that I probably wouldn't have had anyone to play for me. Say families help me feel like I did belong and I'm hopeful about the future and I'm happy. <laughs> Definitely happy, yeah. Hi Helen. Hello. Thanks for being with us this morning. Um, we met a couple of weeks ago in our Sunday morning service. Um, when you came along virtually uh, and I know that you've been joining in with the service this morning on YouTube so that we can find out a little bit more about safe families and, and how you work. So yeah. I, I'd like to ask a few questions about how safe families work and safe family works and if there are any questions that our Beacon family have got then um, we just encourage anyone who's listening now or watching on YouTube if you type into the live chat uh, whilst I'm talking with Helen, type in your questions, Helen can answer those questions and we'll try and share them actually um, on YouTube uh, audibly a little bit later in the service after the notices for those who don't have the live chat. That'd be great. Okay. Um, so we've, we've heard some really good things about Safe Families and it's, it's great to know that you're working in our area of Birmingham but perhaps you could tell us why why would Safe Families, why do Safe Families want to partner with Beacon Church? Well, we really wanted to partner with Beacon Church, particularly because we could see that you have a heart for the community. Um, you started at the listening service, and that is one of the roles that we have, so that we have families nearby that we would love you to support with listening. Um, Safe Families offer the church the opportunity to provide a, a safe, supported way to reach out to isolated families close to the church. We're a faith-based charity and we really um, offer so much to the church in terms of training and support 
and and we just think it'd be a great partnership because of everything that you do brilliant that's fantastic um well if i ask you some details that might make it a bit clearer for me and for people who are listening yeah. so uh, for example if i contacted you and i offered to volunteer some time um to get involved with safe families what would happen what, what would i expect next okay so it would be ten pretend depend on how you wanted to get involved we have three ways to give so you can become a prayer partner you could do more than one of these if you want to uh, you can be a prayer partner and um, you can give if you wanted to give financially or as a resource friend so when we started working with a family we will often have um, resources that they might need so I don't know, like we had a, a family the other day and they hadn't got a bed, so we, we put a request out that. And then volunteering, which is the main way to support. So there's three different ways to, to support. So you could either become a family friend, which they are people that might listen, might go for a walk with a family, might look after a child, might help with a form, could be a one-off, um, all sorts of different ways, but DIY, there's loads of ways, whatever, you, what's, whatever you're interested in, we can find a way to help a family with, um, or on the phone, so that's a connect friend, so somebody that can support on the phone, offering listening help, and often we find that families really, especially at the moment, feel so isolated, like nobody cares, actually having somebody that they can say, oh, Right. Will you listen to me? These are my kind of things that I want somebody to hear and notice. So those are the different ways. And also some people might even choose to host children. So we host children when parents have got health difficulties or um, they might have regular appointments. Um, and so that might be a regular hosting or sometimes it's even an emergency. So that's a little bit of an extra commitment. So, but that's something that some people are interested in doing. So there's a whole range of things from, um, from that, that phone call, that supportive phone call, uh, or even just being able to help find things that people need to little things. There's a whole range through to really being able to give accommodation to, to children. Um, yes to choose from yes yeah okay so is there a kind of minimum amount of time that people would need to volunteer if they said well each week i've got or how, how much would be a minimum amount of time so that's a really good question so how it works is we would get um we well, I'll start from the top. We get a referral for, for a family and they have to be, meet our criteria. So they have to want to be supported by a Christian charity. They have to want to be connected into the community because that's what we're about. We're about providing friends for people and about equipping the church particularly to support those, those people. So once if they met that criteria, then we would meet the family, find out about their needs, what they would like to achieve, what are their goals. And then we put a request out to volunteers in the area. So it might be, there's a family, um, a parent that's really isolated. They haven't got any friends in the area. They want somebody to connect with, to, to listen to them. Maybe they've had some difficulties in the past. Um, so. So that's really what we would do. And then you would get that, that request. So you'll be on a, a list of volunteers and then you would say, oh, yes, I might be able to help or no, or maybe. And then the family support manager who's working with that family would get in touch with you and say, OK, um, how do you want to help? So if you can say, I want to support uh, and give an hour every couple of weeks listening to them on the phone um, or you might say oh I could you know I could support more than that so it's completely volunteer-led and um, some things will be just a one-off 
and whatever you can give. So if somebody signed up and they only gave two hours in a whole year, that, that two hours could be really important for that family. Um, you know, if they've got a hospital appointment, you looked after a child for a couple of hours, then that could be life changing. So you can do as much or as little as you as you want to, really. That's great. So, so it is a bit of sort of give and take between the needs that you've got and you've identified because people have been referred to you uh, and then what we're, we're able to offer and you can kind of match us up. Um, yes. Yeah, actually, the, the family support managers are really good at matching people up and also at maybe putting more than one volunteer around your family to meet those needs. Good, good. That, that's helpful to know as well. Yeah. Um, I suppose my, my last question really would be, um, uh, I think a lot of people would think the same thing. How would I know what to do? Is somebody going to train me? Are they going to, is it going to be someone I can ask for help who's going to supervise me in, in this? Because I might not know what to do or what to say. Okay, so that's great. So uh, what would happen? So if you were to contact me and say, I want to get involved. So what the process would be that I would meet you and it's a lot of the time on zoom at the moment and it would be meeting up and chatting about your strengths what your interests your background that would take about an hour uh, and then then i would do a dbs check um and you would obviously apply online and then you have a couple of evenings training as well and then all of that information is put to a panel which sounds a bit daunting but it's just to check that you're a safe person to work with the family you don't have to go to the panel we we would present you as a potential person to support to the panel and and then what would happen is we would provide all the provision and support so that would not only be um, um phone support text support out of hours, but also um, ongoing support for the church. So we'll do like celebration events. The church have supported so many families. Let's celebrate it um, and um, social events and further training it, it, that's optional. So you can access further training in helping families, in helping with finances. If you, you know, we have a training that's all about applying for grants for families and all sorts of things that people might be interested in but it's all optional so what our aim is to really support you to to help the church really thank you that is really helpful to hear that because all those things are things that we've often wanted to do as a church um, but not really had the resources or the experience to be able to provide that kind of training and and support for the very things that we want to do so that's, that's really great thank you so much Helen for, uh, for explaining all that. Um, it, it's just lovely to hear some more about what you're up to and I do hope that we'll be able to find volunteers within the church um, to do some some work with Safe Families and partner with you. If people would like to volunteer or they just want to find out a bit more um, then how, how can they how can they do that? So if you contact me and um, I can chat to you a bit more. We could have a Zoom chat, a phone chat, whatever you want to do. And uh, and I'm I'm here to kind of talk a little bit more. Any questions, or if you want to put questions on the feed, I can answer those. Or we can chat after the service. Yeah, let me know. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. And we'll we'll, we'll get your details on the screen so people can come back to it and um, put it in the details for this YouTube video, so that people can contact you. Or if you want to contact me and talk to me first. I can give you details for um, for Helen. Um, so yeah, thank you, Helen. Hope we have a few questions on the live chat. Um, have a great day, and I hope to see you again soon. Great, great. Okay, thank you, Tim. Right. Wow, I don't remember talking that much when I interviewed Helen. But um, thank you very much, Helen, for being with us today and also for answering all those questions. There were one or two other questions that didn't get answered um, during that interview. Um, 
One of them was who pays for the DBS check, and Helen has answered that just to say that um, safe families pay for that, and also there's some contact information um, on the live chat for Helen, but it's also there in the video if you want to go back and have a look at how to get in touch with her. Um, Gaurav was asking about help for schools and, and fundraising, and um, Helen, uh, Helen has contacted you about that on live chat, Gaurav, so that's good. Um, just to say thank you, Helen, again. And what we've struggled with as a church often in the past in trying to do this kind of thing is having all that infrastructure around us, all those things being done. Training um, is, is happening in March, as Helen said there. Um, so get in touch with her if you are interested. And DBS checks and, and all the other things are done by safe families. Um, what we need is just to volunteer our time and then we get put in touch with people to, to help them, to care for them, to build those relationships. And also Safe Families is um, free to us as a church, so we don't have to pay any fees as a church for um, being involved with that. So thank you. And I'm going to hand over to Elaine now to do the notices. That's the end of our, our service then. Oh, hello, everybody. Not many notices today. Um, we have um, reviewed, again, whether to start Sunday services with the congregation in the building and have decided to leave things as they are for the moment. Hopefully, our return will be soon. Um, we will review again at our next leadership team meeting in just over a week's time. Now, next Friday, the 5th of March, will be our monthly day of prayer and fasting. Do factor fasting into your day and then make time to join in our Zoom prayer meeting at 7.30 p.m. Tim will send out the link in the normal way and we will be praying for Beacon's work in Africa. Next Sunday, we'll be taking communion, so prepare your bread and juice beforehand. And finally, um, as the first Sunday in the month, next Sunday, 7th of March, would normally be the occasion for our family service. However, we have allocated that family service slot to Mother's Day the following week. So next Sunday will be our worship service, which will be live streamed on YouTube at 11 a.m. And Java will be speaking. So do join us then. Thank you.